are some things, picking up really from where we were last week and then moving on for what we're going to do for the next few weeks, because as you're all aware, the government announced that as of this coming Thursday, we're returning to a national lockdown um, for the whole month of November, which is really frustrating. We're just excited and, and getting going, and we have to kind of rein things in. We knew this was coming. We were hoping for two weeks, but we knew it was coming. The beauty for us in here is you wouldn't believe the amount of effort it's taken to be able to start having services again, and all the planning we've had to do, and mapping everything out, and organizing everything. We've also bought a new sound system, which we've been able to use the last couple of weeks, which is why the, you know, the sound is better. And, and um, so the good news is when we come back in December, it's just plug and play. We can just walk right back in and pick up where we are today and move forward. We'll have to see quite what our numbers are can do then, but we'll be able to be similar to this, where we're spread out, and then still, of course, live streaming at home, because this lockdown includes a restriction of worship that churches are only open for private prayer. No services are going to be allowed. So as a result, there's going to be no youth or children's um, services or clubs for the next four weekends. If you are booked in, currently booked into an on-site event for Tuesday or Wednesday, just look at your emails. We'll be making a decision later today and tomorrow whether we're going to go forward with those, cancel them or do them with Zoom or whatever it might be. I know it sounds easy, all just we'll just have them anyway. Trust me, there's so much involved and so much work around it and then, and then sanitizing, et cetera, afterwards. If you are booked onto a Zoom thing for this week, that's going to go ahead as normal. And so obviously there's going to be no on-site services for the month of November. So nothing for the next four weeks in here or on the Gateway campus, but we are going to be doing a bunch of things, which I'll tell you about in a minute. We're going to discuss what church will look like for the next four weeks, and I am very, very excited about it. Surprisingly excited when you consider the fact I've been chomping at the bit for seven or eight months, whatever it's been, to get back together. We had two goes at it, and now we're not. You would think that I would be downhearted, and I was momentarily. But something just began to stir and spark in my heart, and, and we are ready. Turn, if you will, please, in your Bibles at home here in the room to Joshua chapter 1. I want to read again verse 1 through 9. It says this, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving them, the children of Israel. There are times when God is ready to give you a land. I know you're wearing face masks, but I believe you're allowed to say amen, even if it's just on your own heart. But there are times when God is giving you a land. I believe God is giving us this land. I believe it with all my heart. I believe it looks as if the devil is taking over the world, that the enemy is coming in like a flood. But the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He never spoke of an unbuilding. In fact, he said, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. I don't believe the devil has the power to take the bricks back down off of the wall of what God is building. I'm not saying we're not having church services for a while. I'm talking about the church, what Jesus is doing is happening. And there's a time when he's getting ready to give us some land. Verse 3, every place that the sole of your foot will tread, I have given you as I said to Moses. There is something very powerful about going in and possessing the land, about placing your feet on the land. You always go there in person and in prayer before you experience what you want to experience. Every place the sole of your foot will tread upon, I've given you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea going down toward the sun or whatever shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. It says no one will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. If you look into the original wording of that, it implies this. There's no one that, and if if we weren't having to be two meters apart, I'd ask someone big like Anthony to come and stand right here, and I'd ask him to try and kind of block me. The, the, the original implication is this. There will no one be able to stand in a stationary position to block you. 
When something is trying to stop you from moving forward, stop you from taking the land, the Bible says, God said to Joshua, and we received this promise as well because what he did with Israel is an example and points toward what he's going to do and is doing with the church. As long as we keep walking, as long as we keep moving forward, there is nothing, including COVID, that is able to put itself in a stationary position to block us. I'm not saying we don't have to do some things differently. I'm saying the Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our circumstances may have changed, but Jesus hasn't. So he says, be strong and have a good courage. For to this people you will divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Again, be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all that Moses, the law which Moses my servant commanded. Don't turn from the left or to the right that you may prosper wherever you go. Every place the sole of your feet shall tread. I want to park that thought for a minute and share this with you. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. The NIV says this, where there is no revelation or vision, people cast off restraint. The thing that restrains us, the thing that keeps us moving forward even in the midst of difficult and challenging times, frustrating times, is vision. When you can see where you're going, when you can see what you're supposed to be doing, you can, you can resist the, the, the pull over to the right, the pull over to the left, the desire to just kind of sit down and give up. Or if you think of an elite athlete, when they have a vision, they don't eat McDonald's. They're not going to the chippy. They're eating whatever it is they choose to eat. They are disciplined. They are focused. But when they lose their vision, they cast off restraint. So many people, after they stop being elite athletes, they, you know, kind of, you know, things sort of, you know, go get a little bit, you know, spread out because that, that vision keeps them restrained. It keeps them from eating things that they shouldn't eat, etc. Many of us have struggled over the last seven or eight months with a lack of restraint. You don't have to say amen. You'll be pleased to know right now. You're not allowed to say amen because you're not supposed to speak out loud. Everyone at home, you can just, you know, sort of look at the screen and, and, and no one will know. We have struggled with a lack of restraint. What we're eating, what we're watching, what we're drinking, how much we're sleeping, what we're saying about each other. Man, there's been more gossip and criticism and ugliness spoken over the last seven months than you would ever think normal. People are swearing that don't normally swear. Again, just look straight ahead and act holy. We've cast off restraint as to what we're in faith for things we were believing for, things that we were standing strong. We had the promise of God and we, were, we knew that God was going to pour out His Spirit or, or this was something the Lord wanted to do through us. And we've, we've cast off restraint because we've let go of the vision. And I think what happened last night, you almost kind of feel on the nation just, a, oh, not again. Now what's the point? Now what's the point? Now what are we going to do? There's a lack of vision. But I believe, conversely, God is calling us out of our slumber. He's calling us out of our despondency. He's calling us out of our lack of restraint and saying, I want you to see what I'm doing. I want you to see where I'm taking you. I want you to look at the things I'm showing you because then it becomes very easy to bring your life back into where it needs to be. Make a straight path for your feet. And this is extremely important. It's not healthy to stay on couches. The walk of faith is exactly that. It is a walk. And I know I'm leading in a prayer walking. I don't mean to be that cheesy. I just thought of that. But it is a walk of faith. It's not a sit down of faith. In fact, the Bible says, having done all to stand, stand. There really isn't a sitting down until it's all said and done and we're finished. And believe me, we're not finished. And so I want to share this with you. As we continue prayer walking, and I believe this is something that God is bringing us into and taking us into. So in fact, tonight, we're going to go on a prayer walk again. I don't know exactly how many people prayer walked with us last week. I don't know. There was about 100 people that came on Zoom before and after um, because a number of people had lots on the one, you know, link. So there's about 100 people came on Zoom before and after. But I know quite a few people. Ben, playing the keyboard a minute, he went for a prayer walk. He didn't come on Zoom. My mother went for a prayer walk, didn't come on Zoom. Peter, I think you went for a prayer walk, didn't come on Zoom. So that's just the people I know. 
So there was quite a lot of us that went out last Sunday evening and just began to walk our neighborhoods, walk the area, and began to pray. I believe this is something that God is leading us into. I feel quite strongly about this. I have a sneaky suspicion there's a fire on this. I have a feeling that this is something that we are supposed to be doing, that we're supposed to be engaging with, not even necessarily just on a Sunday when we go out as a church, but I mean a lot more. I believe this is something that God is wanting to bring us into, and I think we will find that there's a life on this, and this is part of the reclaiming of the land. So I want to talk for a little bit more about prayer walking because this has been something that has changed my life this year. I mean, I've always done prayer walking, but this year, this has been a major, major part of my life. And I spent a lot of time. I think it's kept me positive. It's kept me spiritually healthy. Hasn't hurt the waistline either, just throwing that out there, but that's not been the motivation. But I'm saying, hey, you know what? If there's icing on the cake or leaves on the salad, whatever, then praise the Lord for that. Number one, God wants to re-envision you, but he does nothing from afar. Let me say it again. God wants to re-envision you, but he does nothing from afar. God is not a distant God. We're about to celebrate Christmas. They say, call his name Emmanuel, which means what? God with us. God is not a distant God. In fact, what was the very first thing we learn about Adam and Eve's relationship with God is that he went for a walk with them every day. God was not a distant God. I've created you now. I'll leave you to it. He he is a father. He has always been a father. There is few things that delight a father more than when their child spends time with them and wants to talk with them and wants to hang out with them. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. But Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called to Adam and said, where are you? Why was he wondering where he was? Because when God would come down to walk in the garden, Adam and Eve would come and talk with him. There's an old song, a hymn says, and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there. Need my organist. None other can ever know. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. My friend, one of the great dynamics about God's relationship with Adam and Eve is that they walked together. I think that as we walk with God, he he wants to re-envision you. Some of you that are finding yourself spiritually kind of losing faith, losing heart, not, not really pressing into the word like you were. You're not worshiping like you were. I've struggled too. I'm not sitting here pointing a finger at you. There's three coming back at me, four if you got a bendy thumb. I have struggled too. My, my personality type, I, I don't really get depressed or anything like that, so I haven't dealt with depression, but I've definitely dealt with fed up. And I've definitely dealt with, oh, what's the point? And oh, here we go again. And oh, great, another Zoom. And, you know, I've dealt with that just like everybody else. But my walks... As I get out there and I walk with the Lord, sometimes I'll just walk into the city, grab a coffee, work on my message a little bit, or, or do whatever I do, and then I'll walk down the canal out here to church. It's 21 kilometers. I mean, that's a long walk, but you can do it because walking is not that hard. And I'd spend that time with the Lord, and sometimes I'd be worshiping, sometimes I'd be praying in tongues, sometimes I'd be praying for things, sometimes God would drop something in my heart to pray over a place or a business or a house or a person. When I went out last Sunday evening, me, Angela, and Levi, and Rudy, the dog, went out. We went for a prayer walk, and I, was, I began to pray, and I kind of went out without an agenda other than that I wanted to spend an hour praying, or 50 minutes, whatever it was, to get back on the Zoom at the end. I just started to pray, and I found myself saying, God, I'm hungry for revival in this land. I'm praying for the rain in this land. And that was what gripped my heart for that whole time, walking around my neighborhood, praying for the rain. There is something very special about walking with God. Enoch, the Bible says, walked with God. See, the reality is this. It can be very easy to get distracted while you're praying. If you're anything like me, you sit down to pray, and five minutes later, you've no idea what you prayed about. Your head is everywhere. Everything but prayer comes to your mind. It can be easy to be distracted. But when you walk and pray, it helps to keep you focused, I find. I find it a lot easier, even if I'm praying inside, it's very rare I just sit down. I'm either kneeling 
or I'm walking, even if it's up and down in my room. So God wants to re-envision you, but he doesn't want to do it from afar. And I believe that as you, like me, go out and take some time and walk the land and walk your neighborhood or walk some of the cities. And it may be after a little while when we can come together again, we'll organize some time to just meet and walk around Birmingham and pray. How awesome would that be to say, hey, let's meet tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock in the city. We're just going to walk and pray. People can march for all kinds of things. Why can't we march for Jesus? Why can't we pray about the things of God in our land? I just love the people that we go by. So number one, God wants to re-envision you, but he doesn't do it from afar. God didn't yell across heaven and earth, I love you. God so loved the world, he sent his only son to be with us. Number two, we have spent so long sitting on our couches listening to teaching without any spiritual activity that many of us have become very out of shape spiritually. Let me say that again, because it's kind of a long point. We have spent so long sitting on our couches, listening to teaching without any spiritual activity that many of us have become very out of shape spiritually. We have listened to podcast after podcast and service after service and Zoom after Zoom and and webinar after webinar, and we've sat there, and we've listened, and we've taken in, and we've made our notes, and, and, and eight months later, we're not as on fire as you think we would be, because the Christian walk is just that. It's a walk. It's a lifestyle. There's a flow to it, and many of the flows of our Christianity have shut down. Some of them I can think of will be serving is a flow of Christianity. When you serve others, when you, when you sacrifice a little bit to help someone else, whether it be in church or, or out of church, that act of service is one of the flows of Christianity. Giving is another one. Jesus said, when you pray, when you fast, when you give, giving of yourself, giving of your money, giving of your time is a flow of Christianity. And it's amazing how the act of giving, of whatever it is that you're giving, just like it, it, it lights a fire in you. Another one is evangelizing or evangelism. That's another one of the flows of Christianity. It's interesting to me that there's a group of people that have been meeting every week on Zoom. Um, Sophie heads up our evangelism team. There's a whole bunch of people in this room that have been part of that Zoom and, 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 and growing and in, in hearing for the Lord and ministering to people and praying for people. And, and that group have stayed the most on fire amongst a church of over a thousand members. That group of people are the ones that have stayed with the fire. Why? Because there's a flow. They've stayed in the flow. It's a Christian river. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. We're not a pond. We're not even a lake. And some of us have disconnected for too long to the flow of our Christianity. Another flow of Christianity is prayer. And that's why I'm calling you. We know God called us last year that 2020 and beyond was to be a time and a season of prayer. And we've endeavored to carry that on through the prayer schools and prayer meetings and different things. But I believe right now God is adding to your life prayer walking. Not just to our church. This isn't just a little, you know, um, idea for a couple of weeks. I am challenging you. I am calling you to prayer walking. It has changed my life. It has been such a major part of my life this year. See, as we've been listening to the word, we built ourselves up on the truth that God loves us, that he will take care of us. There's been a lot of messages about how God is going to provide for us. God is going to keep us from fear. God is going to protect us and preserve us during that time. And it's all very true. But if we just consume the promises and never act on anything, we become self-obsessed. Very quiet in here. We become self-obsessed even on the promises of God. God's taking care of me. God's blessing me. And these things are, it's not incorrect, but it's incomplete. And God is going to make sure I'm okay. And and God God still has a plan for me. And God still has a purpose for me. and, And it's very, very true. None of that is incorrect. But I'm telling you, there's another side to it. Because he fills you up so he can pour out of you. Are we allowed to say amen? Thank you. He fills you up. Everyone at home, I mean, you can help me because you don't have any restrictions on your volume. So everyone at home, say amen. You're not at home, but okay. If we just take in and there's no outflowing, we become lethargic. It's actually not healthy. 
And so I think it's extremely important. And as I was praying about this last night, talking to a friend of mine in the States, I said this prayer walking will kick start your Christian life flow. Trust me. Trust me. This is kept me. This is kickstart in my flow. I honestly believe this has been a large part of why I haven't gone lower in certain things that I have. And I've struggled. I have struggled. But I'm saying, when I get out there and I put my headphones on or take my headphones out, and I walk and I pray, and I take that time, and sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's wet. Other times I got sunburned. I had a great tan earlier in the year, and you know how I feel about having a tan. And for those that complimented back in those days, thank you. It really meant a lot. Honestly, that was just a little selfish steam boost for me, and I loved it. So thank you. I had a tan. Right now, I've got windburn, but you get what you get. We're going to go out later. We might get wet. The Lord made you waterproof. You won't shrink. You're not going to wrinkle up. And there's umbrellas. So what was I said last week? Man up, princess. Remember all that? We can go out anyway. It's worth it. This opportunity to go out and spend some time with the Lord and pray, it will kickstart your Christian flow. Number one, there are things that God wants to speak to you. He wants to re-envision you. Those of you that are struggling with a lack of vision for your life, lack of vision for your spiritual walk right now, God wants to re-envision you, but he's not going to do it from afar. Walk with him. Walk with him in the cool of the day. Walk with him in the heat of the day. Walk with him in the middle of the night. Walk with him first thing in the morning. Whatever it is, find your time because you will find that God is looking saying, where are you? I want to talk to you. I want to tell you things. Some of the most precious things that God has ever shared with me happened when I was prayer walking or walking and praying. When the Lord spoke to me and just changed the whole course of my, the the, the purpose of my life and I was praying about the glory and he said, John, I didn't give them my glory. They came to me and they got it. I was walking up and down when he said that. I was walking uh, through the streets of a city in February, San Francisco, and the Lord spoke to me about the anointing and said, John, the anointing is the fruit of friendship. We don't really need to pray for the anointing. We don't need to pray for God. Just be a friend of God and the anointing is the fruit of friendship. God wants to re-envision you. He wants to speak things which are so simple. You know when it's God because it's one sentence, but yet it changes your life. It's one statement, but yet everything just opens up for you, and you know exactly where to go. He can do all that in one statement, one sentence. It's incredible. We take hours, case in point. Long sermons, one sentence. Number one, he wants to re-envision you. He's not going to do it from afar. Number two, we've sat on the couch for too long listening to teaching absorbing, absorbing, absorbing with no spiritual flow or spiritual outworking. So number three, so what is church going to look like in November? Let me just talk with you practically for a minute. I don't think we have much of an appetite to just go back to doing what we've been doing for the last seven months. As I've been looking and watching and observing, and we knew that this was coming, there was a break coming when we were going to be able to come and start having services again. We knew there was a national lockdown coming. I think that was pretty inevitable. So we realized it would be a start, a stop, and then, and then off we go. But it was important to do all the work we needed to do to get in here so we can move forward. I don't think there's a great appetite to just go back to here we go again. Tune in, 11 o'clock Sunday morning. We're going to have some worship. We're going to, you know... It just seems to me that it's time for something fresh. And yes, amen. So here's what's on my heart, and here's what we're going to do, is we are going to come online next Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. But I'm just going to sit, Angela and I are probably just going to sit in our living room. We're just going to talk and come together for about, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes maybe. We'll talk a little bit about prayer, just share a few things in our heart. I want to encourage everyone, love everyone on the planet, but certainly everyone in our church to come on and be part of that. We'll make it very clear whether it's Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, all of the above, exactly how we do it. There'll be lots of ways to come on that. And then after about 25, 30 minutes, we're going to put our shoes on, as it were, and we're going to go out, we're going to walk. And we're going to begin to walk our streets Together as a church family, we're going to go out in our streets, we're going to go out in our neighborhoods, and we're going to take that next hour, and we're going to go in and start possessing the land. I believe it's time to shift some spiritual climates. So what about the sermon? We have had so many sermons over the last eight months that we are sermon-possessed. I think it's time that we do something with what we've learned and we do something with these promises and we start prophesying over the land 
and speaking over our neighborhoods and speaking over families. I love, and then we'll come back on at the end and then we'll share some of the testimonies. We did that last Sunday. We're going to do it tonight again at 630. We're going out this evening together. For those that want to join us at that time, you can. And we'll come on and hearing some of the testimonies. I was praying this over a particular house. Or as I was praying, I felt the Lord speak to me. Or like me, I, I found myself praying for revival. I didn't have any specific words for specific houses and places. Different people had different experiences because it's personal. You'll find the Lord comes and walks with you. And he speaks to you and he talks to you. So we're going to do that. The next four Sundays, we're going to meet together online and then we're going to go and and we can do this. As I understand it, under current restrictions, there is no limit to the outside exercise you can take. Under the previous lockdown, you're only supposed to go out for an hour a day. Whereas now they're saying, take as much exercise as you like. I think they're thinking that the weather will deter people. And it may, but it's not going to deter us because we're not out there walking to lose weight. We're out there walking to change the spiritual climate of a nation. Amen? The vision of Gateway changed the spiritual climate of the individual, the family, the region, and the nations. We need to get out there, start walking, start releasing what's in our heart, and, 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 and just prophesy over the land. I'm aware that there are some people that are physically unable to go out and walk, at least certainly not walk that far. Do what you can. Find a way to do it. Pete, your wheelchair's got a massive great battery, so, you know, off you go. And so I don't see any reason. In fact, you are very much in my heart and mind. I I can see you and Hillary prayer walking and prayer rolling. Genuinely, I see that. I can see that going on. I absolutely do. But if you're unable to go out because you're physically incapable or because you don't feel safe in your neighborhood... We've got some precedent for that. I shared it last week. At midnight, Paul and Silas were in jail. They were in prison. And they prayed and they sang praises to God. And the prisoners heard them. And immediately, oh, the, the power of God came. And everyone's prison doors opened. And everyone's bands were loose. Then Paul goes and preaches the gospel of Peter, whoever it was. And they all get saved. And so you can be praying in one place. You can be worshiping in your house, in your place. And if there's anyone watching online that is a prisoner, I mean literally in that prison, pray. In that prison, worship. And let's shift some spiritual atmospheres. So I don't know I can do that. Trust me, you can, because it's Christ in you that's the hope of glory. Jesus said, you come to me and drink, and out of your belly is going to flow rivers of living water. Dean, are you ready? We're doing it, my friend. We're doing it. We're going to change the spiritual atmospheres. So, number one, God wants to re-envision you, but he's not going to do it from afar. Come to him. Number two, we've spent far too long sitting on our couches listening. We've got to kickstart the flow of our Christian walk, a life. And then number three, in November, what we're going to do is gather together as a church family, 11 o'clock next Sunday morning, YouTube, Zoom, Facebook, some or all of the above, we'll talk for about 20 minutes, and then we're going to go out and we're going to start releasing the anointing into the atmosphere, praying as the Lord leads you, whether it's personal, whether it's you know, just praying for a move of God, whether it's prophetic over different houses and, and, and words of knowledge, you let the Holy Spirit lead you however He leads you. Is that all right with everybody? And I'm excited about this. I'm excited because I feel there's a purpose to it. I feel that this is what God is calling us into and where God is asking us to go. I don't just want to preach another sermon to a camera. I would would rather get out and possess the land. I'd rather do it together because if one of us can put 1,000 to flight, two of us can put 10,000 to flight. And who knows, but that it might catch on in your life like it's caught on in mine and be as defining for you as it has been for me. Feel free to tell people about it. People all over the country are welcome to come on with us. Certainly tonight, welcome to come on and prayer walk with us. I don't believe this is just a gateway thing. I don't think this is just a West Bromwich thing. I think this is something that God wants to spark all across the nation, maybe even all across the world. Why not have a dream, right, Mary? We started this a long time ago. Why not have a dream? Why not have a vision? Why not have a fire in our heart that says, I know what God can do, and we're going to watch him do it? Say amen. All right, let's pray, and then I just want to give a little more instruction about what we're going to do tonight. In fact, let's do it the other way around. Let me talk about tonight first, and then we'll pray and ask the Holy Spirit to just set us on fire for this evening. So tonight at 6.30, we changed the time a little bit for the Sunday night prayer walk just because 
Um, my brand new program on TBN starts next Sunday at six o'clock and it's going to be down on every Sunday. So please watch that record it and tell people about it. We'll push it out on social media. But, but as this thing grows, I could see using that program some time at the end of that to encourage people to go out and, and walk and pray and this, that, and the other. So it seems counterproductive to be doing that at the same time. So tonight, we're going to go out as a group from 6.30 to 7.30. Can you turn this keyboard on, Callum? And um, so I encourage you to be part of that. Now, if you're not able to go at that time, then you can come earlier. You know, maybe you don't want to go out when it's dark, you don't know, feel comfortable. Go earlier, but still, I'd encourage you, maybe come on the Zoom with us and just share your testimony and hear other people's testimonies. It was really encouraging to hear at the end, this is what was going on when I prayed. And so that's part of how we can be and feel together as a family and, and be mobilized as a church. So at 6.30... The Zoom will start, and I talk just for about five minutes, share a little bit of an encouragement. We'll then go out and pray, or people will pray in their home if you're not able to go out or don't feel comfortable in your neighborhood. If it's not safe, please don't go out. Pray from home like Paul and Silas did. You can change things from your living room. And then at 7.30, we'll come back on the Zoom, and we'll share, you know, different people to share their testimonies. It was really encouraging to hear that. So whatever time you go out to pray today, Consider coming on the Zoom and we'll be part of this as a family. Again, please feel free to invite other people. This is not a church growth exercise. This is just about praying and releasing. So you might be thinking, you know what? I know some people in my Christian world that would love to get out and pray or be mobilized by this. And, and just this sounds like right up their alley. Feel free to tell them about it. It's, it's, it's open to everybody, obviously, not just for Gateway's family. So, all right, let's stand up on our feet. We're going to pray. Everyone at home, put your hand on your heart. Raise one hand toward heaven. Let's pray about this together. Father, we come before you now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we don't just want to have uh, knowledge. We don't just want to be absorbing and receiving. We want to be giving out. We want the flow of Christianity in our lives. Lord, for some of us, we've lost vision. We've, we've grown disheartened. I pray that you would re-envision us as we spend time with you, as we walk and pray, that you would speak to us like you spoke to Adam and Eve. God, I pray that the lethargy which has come on the church, that this would in part kickstart that, kickstart us back into gear. And that lethargy and apathy would be shaken off of us as we walk quite literally by faith. And then, Lord, I pray that as we go out this evening to pray over the next week, as we go out individually next Sunday morning, as we gather together as a church to pray and walk in this land, oh God, I'm asking you, let the fire of your spirit burn on us that we would recognize this is something different. This isn't just a, a, a nice idea. This isn't just an organized concept. This is something that you are breathing on that you are breathing on. And Lord, I pray, let a, a spirit of prayer break out across this nation, break out across the world, that we would shift spiritual atmospheres. And Lord, would you use us as part of this? And we ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen.